All right, so in this video, I have a brand new pair of Adidas Boost featuring the newest Boost technology called Boost Lite. You guys might not know it actually released, and I wanted to go ahead and show you guys my first impressions of the new technology. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com, and if you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals as well as this pair of sneakers, feel free to check the link in the description. And I'm gonna show you guys this shoe and give you guys my first thoughts. So here's a box. This is the latest and greatest in the Boost technology. And this pair of shoes is known as the Addy Zero Sub 2. Before you all start flaming me in this video, 1000% I know that this pair of sneakers right here is specifically for runners. Yes, I agree, I know. These are for runners, we have established that. These should not be for a Hess, a Hess Kicks, a DJ Hess, a James, these are for a runner, a serious runner at that, because these are supposed to be a sub two marathon type shoe. I think we've heard of something like that before. Nike obviously had the Zoom Vaporfly 4% from the previous year. Super duper light shoe, and this is supposed to be a sub two. And I had no business doing a detailed review of these and after wear thoughts on this shoe, because I didn't run it. So I know I'm gonna piss a lot of runners off by doing a review on this, but but I am a casual sneaker channel, as you guys already know, if you guys are familiar with my channel. And um, I wear shoes casually. I mean, I walk to the grocery store and stuff, and if that offends you guys, you can smack the thumbs down button and all those other things. But this is the new model right here, and it does feature a marbled looking midsole of Boost. And this is definitely something where, as soon as I saw the images of the shoe, I was like, I got to check it out because it was really bizarre looking. It didn't look like any Boost that I've ever seen before. And the fact that they created a technology called Boost Light, I just had to see how it was comparison to the real thing. So as you can see, the material looks really bizarre. It definitely looks kind of like a styrofoam type material. It's really coarse to the touch. It almost feels like fiberglass in a sense, but this is like no Boost we've ever seen before. The pellets are bigger and you can see it definitely has the marble because of the gray in the Boost but it doesn't feel like Boost. It's totally something different. Part of the reason why I was really interested in this is because yes, it is called Boost Light, but it actually lives up to the name on the scale because it is actually super crazy light. So I wanted to check it out and see what it reads back as. For my nine and a half, weighs 6.2 ounces on the scale. That is pretty significant. And the Nike Vaporfly 4%, which is their ultra light running shoe as well, actually weighs 6.9 ounces. That's pretty crazy because this one was insanely light when I was wearing this when it first came out. And these are even lighter than th these ones. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that you can have a lighter shoe. And just for fun, the Adidas Ultra Boost weighs 10.7 ounces. The Adi Zero Tempos weigh 9.7 ounces. This might be the lightest sneaker I have in my collection at 6.2 ounces. You have a Continental Microweb sole which is basically like an evolved stretch web. So it definitely maximizes your grip and it definitely reduces some slippage. And these are gonna be a thousand times more durable than what Nike created at the $250 Nike Vaporfly 4%. The Addy Zero Sub 2 cost $180 though, so this is not a cheap shoe. As for the fit, I would say these are true to size. They are a little bit narrow though. Uh, at the end of the day, like a lot of shoes fit my feet narrow, so it is what it is. The upper on this, as you can see right through, it is super crazy. It's a single layer upper of ultra light fabric that's engineered from reduced weight mesh. And it has some internal reinforcements that you can't really see. This heel cup looks soft, but it's actually really, really firm. Because the material on this shoe is so minimalistic, this section of the shoe right here is not the most comfortable um, with or without socks. It's just definitely not the most comfortable in this section, but it's something that you get used to. But you guys have been patiently waiting to hear my thoughts on the Boost Light technology. Give yourselves a pat on the back and a thumbs up for uh, being so patient. But I'm sure the big question that you guys are wondering about is how is Boost versus Boost Light? And I will have to say it's different. I mean, I hate to give you guys answers that beat around the bush, but the reality is it's super different. It doesn't feel like it is Boost at all. Honestly, you could tell the way that they merged these pellets together, similar to the way they did the regular Boost pellets. It looks just like a different type of pellet compound that they heated up and smushed together, but it definitely is not the same thing as Boost. Does it have the responsiveness of Boost? I would say no, but the big selling point of this is the fact that these are incredibly lightweight. So we already mentioned this is not as responsive and it's not as bouncy as Boost. Is it still worth buying? 
And I say, yeah, I think that this is definitely worth trying. And I'm again, excited to see where the technology takes us because I personally like lightweight shoes. These weren't crazy responsive on feet or anything like that, but they were not, not comfortable, if that makes any sense. It didn't feel like I had anything on my feet. They, were, they felt great all day long. I usually walk on the treadmill at work for like an hour each day. And I walked on in these one a couple days and they just felt fine. And the honest truth is I think that these are actually better geared towards runners than what boosts are. And now I know a lot of people like Ultra Boost isn't a running shoe, but the original creation and intent of this shoe was for runners. Didn't really turn out to be more of a running shoe. It ended up being more of a lifestyle shoe in my opinion. There's definitely people that still run in this shoe, but if you want a lightweight shoe, that has some impact protection and, um, and is just a really light ride. This shoe is pretty incredible for the same price point as the Ultra Boost. So $180 features a different kind of boost, but because it is so crazy light, if you wanted something that is super lightweight, this is a must try in my opinion. The overall style of the Adi Zero Sub 2, I'm not a huge fan of it personally just because it's such a low profile shoe, but it does have a really simplistic upper, which I do like. And as I mentioned, you can see through the entire shoe, so it definitely has a ton of ventilation in the upper. I definitely like that Adidas is trying new things and bringing new technologies to the market. You have my favorite Adidas Boost back here. You have the 4D technology with the Futurecraft coming as well and more silhouettes. And now you have this Boost Lite for those serious long distance runners. All in all, when I got these and tried them on, I definitely didn't feel like it was the same thing as Boost. They probably could have called this something else because it really doesn't feel anything like the original thing. But I do like the technology and the cushioning system seems really nice. I don't know about the durability of this comparison to regular Boost because regular Boost, although it does turn colors pretty quickly, it is really solid. It's really good in heat and cold. And I'm not sure if these are gonna hold up against the elements as well. But those are my initial thoughts on the Adi Zero Sub 2 featuring the Boost Lite technology. I wanna see what they're gonna do with the Boost Lite technology in general. I think it will be interesting to see if they get more of a following with this new marbled look or not. But I'm definitely glad I was able to at least try these out and uh, give you guys my first initial thoughts on them. If you guys want a more detailed review of these, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. I will consider doing that here in the future. And also, I owe you guys a month review of wearing this shoe right here. I actually wore these for a month. I know it don't look that dirty, um, but if you look between, there's actually a little bit of dirt stuck in between these columns. Anyway, I wore these for a month. I'm gonna have a detailed review coming on my channel uh, in the next week or so as well. So stay tuned on the channel and look for that video. And that is uh, pretty much this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my first look at the uh, Boost Lite. If you guys want to subscribe to the channel, feel free, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified, yada, yada, yada. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace.